There's a certain way a place feels between when the last people moved out and when you move in. There's labeled boxes on the floor, an empty fridge, some furniture, and Wi-Fi of course. The essentials are all set up. The bare bones of what will soon become your home are just recently placed, poised to be a part of this new chapter of your life. Oftentimes a move is about change, about moving on from wherever it is you lived before. While moving into a new home isn't always about a major change in one's life, whether that's moving out of the parents' house, moving into a bigger place cause you're ballin' now, or into a smaller one cause you're broke AF. A move, oftentimes, is about more than just changing location. It's about moving on. Moving forward. Step zero of our transition is already complete with all the aforementioned things in place, but step one has only just begun. Step one being the entirety of I'm still here. All ten minutes of it! And honestly, that's being generous. In this grainy, simple-shaped reality in which we find ourselves, there is a big story packed into a tiny, tiny game. A story about what it means to move forward and what it means to be left behind. So prepare yourself for the tiny story you never knew. So then, we begin standing in our living room, thinking thoughts to ourselves. Ah, finally moving into my new place, a chance to start a new life. The landlord seemed a little weird about this place, but, but I don't have time to worry about that. I need to finish putting those books away. A job that must be done immediately. Can't have our printed knowledge and novels isolated to the darkness of a cardboard box. So that goes there, and that goes there, and yeah. Oh, mm, there, there, no, just, uh, no, mm, mm, just put that there, and then, mm, no, damn it, just, mm, mm. One hour later. All right. Now, uh, God damn it! what the fuck? It took me an embarrassing number of tries to put that shit away. Naturally, we ask why the books are moving, and then we realize that our only hope of finding an answer is to ask the internet. Oh, dear. To Wahoo Answers we go! The vault of higher knowledge. Such as answers to questions like, why won't my parents talk to me? Answer reads, you should call your parents to make sure they aren't dead. Insightful. But not what we're looking for. We want, why won't my stuff stay still? Answer reads, you got ghosts, bruh! You need to perform an exorcism! Thanks, Zach. And in case you, the viewer, weren't convinced there are ghosts, some books start moving and having a dance party in front of us. Dope lighting and all! Clearly this ghost knows how to have a good time. Or something like that. I I'm just trying to keep it positive because this is pretty damn creepy! This place better have cheap rent! Single bedroom in the city, sure. All I'm saying is utilities better be included if I gotta do my own exercising. Of ghosts. I'd pay $8.50 a month tops. California real estate, what are you gonna do? Anyways, the internet says the best way to annoy a ghost is to flip the light switch on and off over and over again. Gets this guy's sister every time. I can only imagine ghost psychology doesn't stray too far from sibling psychology, so let's add our own strobe light to this creepy dance party. Aha! Aha! Ha ha ha! Take that, you stupid ghost! Cut that out, dude, jeez! Who said that? Get out of my house! No way, this is my house. Stop being such a jerk. This is my house now! Y you must be dead. Oh wow, this is heavy! My spirit must be stuck here because my body still needs to be put to rest. <laughs> that makes sense. Will you help me find my body? Sure, if it'll get you to leave me alone. I will find your body and put you to rest. And so we search our bare apartment to do just that. Where do we find a corpse? Maybe the fridge? Nope. Bedroom? Nah. Cabinets? No. Hmm. What about the bathroom? The medicine cabinet? No. <gasps> the toilet! Could it be? Hey, that's me! You found me! So that's how I died. Wow, this is heavy. Well, can you help me move on so I can stop haunting this place? I'll finally put you to rest, little buddy. Yes, to rest. Our aquatic orangish gold friend has been haunting this place since the last time someone took a piss, I guess. Until now, this poor fish had no idea it was even dead. An impressive thing to be ignorant of. I applaud your retention of ego. But clearly, this strange situation has made you restless, has it not? brave deceased fish. How strange you had no idea you had died. Were you so bored and lonely that a sensationless, motionless existence in a pitch black toilet bowl was hardly different than the life you had lived? Your owners must have hardly cared at all. Hence why you haven't left, still believing there was some sort of purpose left to fulfill. <laughs> Well, um, I'm gonna give it to you, your purpose. From this moment forwards, despite the owners of yesterday carelessly forgetting you in death just as they ignored you in life, I will put you to rest with the holy ceremony, a send-off to the great beyond. I will remember. We will remember your lifetime of swimming aimlessly in a limiting, revealing bowl with only the sight of food flakes at the surface to look forward to. I'm here to tell you it was worth it.
I'm free! Rest in peace, little buddy. I'll always remember you. You go to live on peacefully in your new apartment, but you can never shake the memory of your little friend. You occasionally take a peek in the toilet and dream of finding them there again, but all you find in the bowl is emptiness, and occasionally there is a turd if, if you forgot to flush earlier. The end. And that's the end. But what does it mean? It all comes back to that feeling a place has before you move in. Your life and the life of those who moved out are moving forward. Yet here there is a fish who has been left behind. Until you came along. The only one who really, truly noticed the fish was here. By the previous owner's neglect and their inability to flush the fish when it died, we can infer they didn't care much for our aquatic antagonist. When it was alive, it likely swam aimlessly and alone in its tiny bowl in the middle of the room, hardly acknowledged until someone bothered to sprinkle food flakes in the water. The life of most domestic fish. But you acknowledged its existence. You justified its longing and confusion that first began in the fishbowl and culminated in the toilet bowl. The fish had dark thoughts. Thoughts molded by loneliness and unfulfilled purpose. Thoughts that boiled down to, I'm still here. And that's the story. You never knew. So that was a cool story about a fish. The game is tiny and short, but I'm a fan. I probably even cried a little. Did you cry? For our noble fish? Or perhaps you were indifferent. You callous bastard. I kid, I kid. But hey, if you're a fan of this existential it, go ahead and click on everything the story never knew. It will tell you everything you need to know about your place within everything. Like, actually, it, it's pretty silly like all of our videos, but it gets a whole lot more real than this one. Not that fish feelings aren't real. Not looking to offend our water-dwelling demographic. Anywho, it, it's time to head out. I'm Grant, and I'll see you guys in the next video.